stop whatever you are doing because i have breaking space news the sun might eject a very big solar flare in a few days that will have the power to stop the entire human race for months think internet shutdowns all over the world electricity outage that may last for weeks no phones no electricity no laptops maybe not even cars this is a very big possibility as on 2nd december NASA's Sun Observation Space Telescope, the mighty Solar Dynamics Observatory, saw one of the largest ever coronal hole in the sun. Also, sometimes known as the sunspots, was so big that it could easily engulf 60 Earths. Welcome back everyone. Today we are going to talk about this very special sunspot that has been observed. The question that may arise in your mind is when is it going to hit Earth? are we safe and why would sunspots become solar flares coronal holes are striking features of the sun often appearing as dark regions in the solar corona when observed in extreme ultraviolet and soft x-ray images these spots are notable because they are much colder than the other regions of the sun's surface and also much less dense than compared to the surrounding plasma These coronal holes can develop at any time at any region of the sun's outer surface. However, they are more persistent and common in the years of solar minimum. Most persistent coronal holes can last through several solar rotations, each spanning about 27 days. These coronal holes are kind of like missing pieces of sun's outer surface and because they are much less dense than the other surface areas they allow the solar wind a stream of charged particle emitted by the sun to escape more easily into space the result is a stream of relatively faster solar wind often referred to as solar flares The coronal hole that we are talking about today is so big that it can easily engulf 60 earths inside of it. It is expected to lead to G2 geomagnetic storming and probably a small G1 storm also. The solar winds may approach at 1.8 million miles per hour towards our planet, most of which will get deflected by our strong magnetosphere. The remaining ones will collide with atmospheric particles and it will cause green and blue light in its form of aurora in night sky green is formed by the particle's collision with oxygen blue and purple is caused by the particle's collision with nitrogen this kind of auroras can be observed in other planets like in jupiter and saturn also but this is not the first time events like this actually happened at least 3 times that we know of in the last 200 years and one of them was actually relatively recent when humanity was already using electricity telegraph and already had cables going under the sea in order to conduct communications there was actually one in 1921 sometimes it's referred to as the may 1921 geomagnetic storm but it's more commonly known as the new york railroad storm because this unusual storm had a huge effect on the united states the sudden surge in electric currents sparked a number of fires across the us and actually across the entire planet with a really huge one in the grand central terminal the surge of electricity started a major fire there which was widely reported making this event known as the New York Railroad Storm but it also had a major disruption to all telegraph services across the entire country virtually stopping it for approximately 12 hours so basically anything that involved some kind of radio cable would not function anymore and in some cases set things on fire ironically though because of the changes in the atmosphere a lot of radio propagation or a lot of radio waves were actually increased in power making long distance communication through radio waves a little bit more efficient but in terms of power a lot of recent studies established that it was extremely similar to carrington event maybe a little bit weaker but still quite strong the carrington event was the most intense geomagnetic storm ever recorded in history peaking from 1st to 2nd September 1859 during solar cycle 10 it created strong auroral displays that were globally reported and caused sparkings and even fires in multiple telegraph stations 
But I guess what's really important is that this 1921 event happened approximately 62 years after the Carrington event, which already kind of implies that this is not as uncommon as we thought. One recent study from December of 2023 discovered something else nobody expected. There is a third event and it kind of happened around the same time. The event that happened in 1972, basically 13 years after the Carrington event. So, is there a way to prevent it? When it comes to understanding how to prevent this, there is no way. But certain locations have been observed and reported to get less affected. We obviously still don't have any understanding what makes these certain locations safe, but there must be some kind of a scientific answer. And that is, of course, something we don't have yet. But we need to find it so badly because if this actually happens anytime soon, my YouTube journey is probably going to be finished before it could have even started. That is not good. And so, in order to prepare for such an event and in order to actually be ready for whatever happens, we also have to figure out why geomagnetic storms seems to have a lot more power in specific locations of the planet than obviously not build anything important in those locations. And because we know that most of these storms seem to usually happen during the peak of the solar activity, at this point, a lot of scientists are kind of worried. They're worried that it might happen in 2024 or maybe in 2025 or it might happen during the next cycle. But it's definitely going to happen at some point in the future. This is just what history tells us. Three such events in last 200 years with the fourth one possibly following very soon. But at least for now, that's kind of all we know. These are really exciting studies, maybe somewhat unavering studies, but still very interesting. And we'll definitely come back and talk more about this once there are more information and discoveries or more clarification. Until then, thank you for watching.